Okay, and we're live. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Philippines Edu Webinars. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. This event is in collaboration with QSR Corporation, a Google Cloud, and Google for Education partner in the Philippines. Google Ata Groups, or GEG Philippines, and Acer. So tonight's topic would be about mobile classroom. I will be your speaker for tonight. They say. Elementary school I am the first six years of I'm a Google certified education. educator, a Google certified innovator level. here in the Philippines. I am Secondary also I am actually a teacher here in the Philippines. I teach Earth and Life Science for senior high school and I've been teaching for around eight years. Now, I will be discussing about mobile classroom. Well, gusto ko pong tanungin po muna sa inyo kung sino po ang nanonood ngayon ng ating show via mobile phones, kung smartphone po ito or tablets. Anyone, you can, you can leave your comments in the comment section. Later on, I will also accommodate, accommodate some questions Iwan nyo lang po. Ayan, mag magandang gabi po sa mga, nunun mga nanunod. Ayan, si Ma'am Gertrude, maraming salamat po. ICT office, thank you very much. Ayan. Now to start off with my may topic. Actually, Five, six years ago, I was privileged to be able to handle some mobile learning pilot projects in the Philippines. I was able to handle schools from public to private schools to test if mobile devices, smartphones, tablets, and even some Chromebooks will work for some situations, some up here, most especially in the provinces or even for public schools because it is a fact that smartphones and tablets cannot be avoided cannot be avoided tama po? so they conquered most aspects of our daily lives changed our habits and digitized our lives tama po ba? so most of the time we are holding our cell phones our tablets checking it from time to time so, paano po ba natin gagamitin ang smartphones or how can we integrate these devices into our education? Now, we're going to talk about mobile classroom, but specifically mobile learning. So, ano po ba yung mobile learning na tinatawag? Or in other words, you can also call it as M-learning. So, it is education via the internet or network using personal mobile devices such as tablets and smartphones to obtain learning materials through mobile apps, social media interactions, and online educational hubs. So meron ng M-learning. So ang familiar lang usually po, no? familiar sa atin is e-learning. So ngayon, there is actually what we call M-learning. So kung babalikan natin yung e-learning na nag-trending in the past years, e-learning eh, um, e learning refers to the learning system that can be obtained through the internet using an electronic device. But this is specifically for laptops and computers. Now, why, mo, ma, why mobile technology should be considered in an evolving classroom? Bakit po ba natin to dapat i-consider? Well, number one, with the use of the mobile devices, it actually enhances the critical thinking skills of the students through information and discovery, interpretation, reasoning. So these are the one of the skills that that will be enhanced sa mga students natin. 
The other one would be communication. Ayan, effective listening, delivering oral presentations. So, I guess, alam na yung mga kasunod na mga lalabas po dito, no? So, if you have critical thinking, you have communication, definitely, merong creativity. So, with the use of the smartphones, the creativity of the students will also be pushed or will also be developed. And then, the collaboration. Definitely, if we're using smartphones, we're also helping students how to, to work together, how to collaborate well with, with each other. So, ito yung mga part ng 21st century skills, tama po. So, again, this is also the same with the integrating technology in general. But we'll go or deep dive pa sa kung bakit pa mobile technology should be considered. Now, if we're going to look at this um, this data, number of mobile phone internet users in the Philippines from 2017 and projected to the year 2023. So we're really expecting that in the coming years, smartphones will be very well used by our by 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 people in general but specifically for, specifically for education how can we position this now going back to the pedagogy of mobile learning it is not just an online learning on a small screen smartphones have small or, or smartphones have some limitations compared to computers but also unique affordances that can allow for new kinds of learning experiences. Actually, with the use of smartphones, you will be able to discover new things about our students. Kasi karamihan din po ng mga students natin might not be very participative when it comes to um, being inside the classroom. But with integrating these kind of devices, we'll be able to tap them more and be able to know their, their personality or to be to even know them more now i would like to just compare contrast e-learning and m-learning this what po hindi po natin pinag uh, pinagtatalo po no but we just want to compare both and how these can mix or integrate together now for e-learning when you have to teach specific skills or impart an in-depth knowledge on a subject to your audience, there are two key learning objectives. One would be comprehension, the other one would be retention. So meaning with the use of laptops, we we help them to gain more knowledge, in-depth knowledge. But with M-learning, accessing information is only at the moment it is needed. So ibig sabihin, kapag kailangan ma-check ng student or ma-check even the teacher kung ano na nangyayari sa online class ng, ng, ng students. This is also to support an ongoing learning process where the learner needs quick access to bits of information, usually on the go. And while maybe even on your commute or when you're walking or maybe um, out of your desk, so you can just quickly check all your materials, all your lessons in just few clicks. Next, for the medium of delivery, for e-learning, think computers and laptops. So that is e-learning e tethers the learner to his or her desk. So ibig sabihin, this would maybe on a longer time frame. But for m-learning, this is just smartphones or iPads or tablets. So the keyword here would be on the go. So you really are moving. Ibig sabihin, there is the option to be portable or readily accessible. Ayan. For this, for the design, e-learning would be more on large screens with detailed information. Well, for m-learning, that would be bite-sized modules one idea per screen, or large buttons and simple navigation. For duration for e-learning, this would be longer. Again, what I've uh, discussed a while ago, 
for e-learning since you're expecting your students to be on their desk. So the, the time frame for that would be longer, maybe 30 minutes to maybe an hour or maybe 45. For m-learning, it's designed to be completed in bite-sized modules, roughly 3 to 10 minutes. No. Now, what are the different uh, mobile learning benefits? Well, if hard to well, it can also aid student engagement and digital citizenship. This topic actually hindi masyado na pag-uusapan in the classroom. What is actually digital citizenship? Digital citizenship is actually how we interact, how we manage ourselves online. And this would not just involve our students, but also the teachers, even us adults. So ito yung mga bagay na ano ba yung dapat matutunan ng student when it comes to handling themselves online? Do they have another personality when they're online? Do they project other personality or, or other image? So this is something that uh, that this this is something that we can teach to our students how to properly um, interact with people, how to properly behave online. Ayan. Next, for mobile learning, it's also an essential tool for parents in communicating with their children, teachers, and school admin. So definitely, this is also a plus plus for parents. Almost all of our parents also have their mobile phones. So with, with these mobile phones, it would help them to monitor their children, communicate with the teachers, and also optional, they would even know, um, they would even know the materials or the assignments or due dates of the performance tasks of the students. Mobile learning also may harness the communicative and educative aspects of smartphone in everyday school and home life of the students. So again, with this one, it also improves the communication of the students. Sometimes, so, um, may mga pagkakataon na this can also be in a negative way because sometimes students are also glued in their cell phones because of the social media aspects or even the, the texting aspects, tama po. But actually, for, for the social media aspect, what we have to do is to be able to train also our students or set guidelines on how to properly manage their, their social media time, their, their 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 screen time even with the parents so it should be hand in hand no with teacher and parents to be able to communicate how mobile devices can be uh, well planned for for the students or for their sons or daughters and the other one would be it will provide teachers and parents with a more mobile digital means of guiding students to be productive, responsible, and ethical users of technology. So this is in connection also with the digital citizenship a while ago. So ito po, natuturuan din natin yung mga estudyante natin how to become responsible when it comes to using their, their cell phones. Mapa-online man yan or mapa-offline. So we already teach them how to be independent and again, babalikan ko from what I've discussed last night. This is also in related in in relation to giving them the opportunity to have a self-paced learning through their devices. Now, I will be showing you some of the recommended apps that we can use and install in our mobile phones. So basically what I have here are screenshots po ng aking mga ginagamit na apps sa pagtuturo. 
if you're using an Android phone, all the Google apps or most of the Google apps are pre-installed already in your phone. Kung mapapansin po ninyo, sa mga bagong cellphones po dyan, may kita nyo, um, Google apps are already there. Now, padadaan ko lang po, if you have your Gmail, definitely, you, you should have a Gmail in your cell phone. For quick access, for for emails, quick emails from your colleagues, importante pong may Gmail po kayo in your cell phone. Because you, you, again, you also wouldn't want to open your your laptops from time to time if you want to check on, check your email or maybe you um, go to your, your, your desks. And here, we also have your Google Drive. This is the cloud storage of Google. Again, if you want to purchase a, or sorry, if you want to have a Google for Education account for your schools, I'll be flashing it here. You can email there, education at qsr.com para po magkaroon po kayo ng Google for Education accounts para po sa school ninyo. It's actually for free. Ayan. Yung mga benefits po ng, ng having a Google Drive and the, the other Google apps are in the other videos of QSR Corporation. So you may review and check that. Ayan po. So I have here also Google Slides, ayan, Google Docs for presentations and creating document. So maganda rin po dito, it's not just web-based or browser-based, but it's also an app-based tool. So again, if you're on the go, maybe nasa bus or nasa tama, tricycle. I even remember, remember um, pag, pag nasa tricycle ako, I still even edit my lessons or, or my lectures. Ginagawa ko po yun. So, nagdudut po ang ganyan sa, sa tricycle or even uh, sa jeep before. Ayan. What else? You have your, your Google you have your Google Calendar um, for for creating uh, events. YouTube. Have also, your Google Expeditions. Bigyan ko lang po ng overview. No? Si Google Expeditions, it's an app where you can use AR and VR. AR is augmented reality. VR is for virtual reality that you can implement with your students if you want to go on a trip or an exploration. Magandang maganda po yan. Definitely have your Play Store. Again po, for, for all the, the, the users here, you can download the apps in Play Store or in the App Store if you're using an Apple phone or iPhone. What else? Skip ko na po ito. I'll be proceeding with Google Classroom. Ayan. So again, one of the, the best applications that we can use in education is the Google Classroom. It is the content management system of Google where we can put all our materials and invite our students to be in one place or one space. So I'll just give you... Um, a quick tour of how Google Classroom looks like in a mobile device. Ayan. So pag-check nyo po ng Google Classroom, pag nag-download po kayo, ito po ang itsura niya. If you have existing, if, if you have an existing classroom already, ito po yan. So these are the different apps or classroom that you've created in the past. Ayan. Now, ito rin po yun. So, if you want to create another classroom, you just have to click plus. It's either you join a class or create a class. Same lang po if you're on, on, a, brow on a browser um, mode. Now, once you've created a classroom, dadalin po kayo sa ganito po. Ito. So, you will see here all the different uh, announcements. So in the browser-based um, mode, kung mapapansin nyo, yung stream, yung classwork, yung people, may kita nyo yun sa taas. But in your mobile devices, nasa baba po ito. So may kita nyo si stream. If you want to post anything, announcements for your students, 
classwork naman if you if you want to upload materials create an assignment or quiz assignment and then uh ito po makikita niyo yung mga mga topics if you're already in the classwork you can monitor each of your created assignments and then here under people you will also see your name or your yung teachers na kasama mo sa Google Classroom and even the list of your students. So individually, you can message or email them or add more students. Now, ito naman po ang maganda with creating assignment with Google Classroom. Dito naman po, um, you can really monitor individually kung nag-submit na yung student o hindi. So, tinago ko lang po yung, yung pangalan ng student, but here would normally appear the name of the student and the score. So, ibig sabihin, in your cell phone, you can, you can uh, grade your student. So, if it's over 80 or over 100, and this is the document. So, if you want to go over with the document, you can just click this. Ito po yung itsura niya. So, the same. In your mobile device, you can quickly check what's happening with the student's work. You can also edit, you can underline, you can leave comments for improvement. So, ganun po ka-powerful ka if you're on a mobile device, the power of the G Suite tools. Again, these are not just for Google Classroom or for Google Docs. You can implement almost all, like Google Slides, um, Google Forms, pwede na rin po. Browser for, for mobile devices. What else? Again, mas maganda po na at least po meron tayong prior knowledge on the basic usage of Google or G Suite tools for us to be able to maximize the power of Google Classroom. Now, I'll be also showing you some of my recommended applications that you can use or download in your smartphones. Now, one would be this, Canva. So this is, this is a tool that you can use to create posters for your students, let's say, if you want your assignments to be in a poster or mas creative ang itsura, this is the best tool for you. It's Canva. So ngayon din po, um, nag-release na rin po ng Canva for Education. So you can also explore on that. Um, Kinemaster. So if you want to explore on video editing, especially now na naka-quarantine tayo, if you want to develop videos, Short videos, long videos, lectures, you may want to try the KineMaster application. You can really edit um, your videos. Ito rin po yung ginagamit ko. So you can check my profile. You can check my, my, my previous videos in my channel. So lahat po yun galing pong uh, KineMaster. And again, ang maganda rin po dito, yung mga, mga Adobe mga Adobe apps, ay, Adobe tools, pwede rin po ma-download via mobile phone. Ay, or even Photoshop. Very useful. Now, if you want to explore naman on the drawing side or sketching, or if you want to integrate this with your students, I would recommend Auto, Autodesk Sketchbook for Android users. I think meron din to for Apple devices. Um, incredible. This is a if you want your signature na e-signature, magandang maganda po ito. What else? Adobe Draw. Ayan. So, mer marami po akong mga apps when it comes to um, drawing, art, or creativity side. So, these would be some perfect tools to tweak your, your strategies ngayon pong quarantine, naka-quarantine po tayo. Now, I'll be entertaining some questions po. Ayan. 
Good evening po sa inyong lahat, sa mga nanonood. I am ready to entertain some questions. Good evening, ICT office, uh, Ma'am Gertrude. Chug, tama po ba? Telma, Ma'am Tel. Sir JD, good evening. Um, Ma'am John, Ma'am Cassandra. QSR, thank you very much for, for all the support. Sherlene. Rona, Sir Kevin, maraming salamat po sa, sa pagsubaybay po from the very first day hanggang um, our last. By the way po, no, um, this is our last day for the Philippines Edu webinar. This is the first. We'll be having um, three more webinars tonight. Ayan. I'll be flashing some of the comments here. Ma'am Gertrude, M-Learning is so amazing. However, are there waterloos in the use of M-Learning? How can we address them? Well, he, there are waterloos. Opo. Sabi nga po natin, kasi we're already, we're, we're in the age of technology at hindi na po natin may iwasan na talagang ang mobile devices po ay na, um, involved na in our daily lives. Kasi dati, no, in our times, bawal talaga ang cellphones. Major offense yun kapag nag mag pag nagdala ka ng, ng cellphone sa school. The other one, nasanay talaga tayo before sa traditional na pen and paper. But, uh, um, balikan ko, sometimes they see it as disruptive. And the other factor is teachers are not prepared to use cellphones in classrooms. So, paano po ba natin siya um, pwedeng ma-address? Number one is that if the school is decided to integrate smartphones, there should be some strict policies or rules kung, kung paano po siya pwede gamitin inside the school. Let's say you can uh, creatively... Um, let's say, think of, pwede ano, may zone lang. There are specific areas or zones na pwede gamitin ng smartphones for the students. And then there are off-limits as well for its use. Like for example, CR or yung mga medyo tagong area, pwede, pwede kayo mag-set ng mga ganong rules for the school and especially with the student handbook. For the implementation naman inside the inside their their home pag sa bahay na po ang pwedeng gawin is syempre to be able to to communicate first with the parents how this will work and syempre hand in hand with the, the with the parents there should be also some limitations or policies lang din at home para hindi rin babad na babad ang mga ang mga students Then again, the other one also, if you're integrating this with, if we're going to implement this, syempre dapat ang teachers ready. Tama po. Sometimes kasi, if they don't know how to use it academically, the smartphones, they'll be disappointed. Tama po. They will think na ang hirap. Well, totoo naman po yun. Mara, may mga bagay po, no, kapag bago po sa atin, nakakatakot subukan. Pero again, um, Pwede po muna tayo mag-pilot testing. We we go by groups or let's say pilot first with with within the teachers muna and then we, we don't really have to go on full blast kapag uh, in-implement natin ito. We can go first with the, um, let's say, pilot class lang muna para po pwede pa rin natin ma-modify. Again, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Eh. Maaari pong nag work na ang isang system sa isang school pero pag paginaya or inimplement into another school baka hindi siya mag-work again it's a case by case basis we do also um um kailangan natin mag mag uh, mag pilot muna kung magdadahan-dahanin natin yung yung proseso we have one uh, question um from Ma'am Marjorie, good evening po, thank you. Is One of the waterloos is that students should have their load for the data. 
Kasi po this is one of the concerns among our students. Walang load, wala pong pang-load. Okay. Um, quick kwento lang po. Ano? Um, when, when, we, when we had a pilot testing 2016 in, in a public school sa isang probinsya po, um, Noong una, hindi po kami sigurado kung talaga mag-work po ang Google Classroom for um, for the students, even with the mobile phones. Kasi we also, um, the teachers also ask the students, oh, if if you want to access your Google Classroom, you can download the app, you can put it there. Eh, yung mga students, um, nagkataon na, they're really engaged. You know? Magulat kayo na yung estudyante nyo mismo, Minsan, sila pa yung mauuna when it comes to checking what you just recently introduced. So, and uh, may mga times din po, no? We also have to adjust some our our expectations sa ating mga students. So, let's say, um, instead of giving them uh, the following day deadline, you may want to adjust it. Maybe three days or one week adjustment. Para lang po maiwasan natin yung mga reasoning na, Sir, wala po akong um, pang-load or hindi po ako naka-internet kagabi. So mga ganun. But there are some stories also na nagugulat din kami na um, may mga teachers na nagpe-prepare ng Google Classroom gabi pa lang para in the morning, pagpasok nila, ready na. Magulat sila na pagpasok ng mga estudyante, na-access na pala nila yung ginawa ni teacher kasi they're very excited. So again, you might want to try and experiment kung ano yung magiging direct effect nito with your students. And then from there, we can just modify. Kasi again, ano po yan eh, dedepende rin po yan sa, these are the apps, standard apps na, na meron tayo. We, we can be very creative on this. We can adjust our strategies. Ayan. One more. Um, thank you for your wisdom. Use of M learning in the school. I love the pilot class thing. Yes, po, ma'am. Um, maraming salamat po, no. So yun po yung lagi namin sinasabi when it comes to innovating. Um, Shempre, lahat naman po tayo, lahat ng schools uso mag-innovate. But sometimes there are different concerns. Let's say budgets, readiness, um, infrastructure. But these are all the factors that we have to consider for if if we want to innovate but definitely um hindi natin to pwedeng biglaen hindi natin to pwedeng madaliin dahil po kapag uh, ang teacher po ay um kumbaga kapag negatively nga na take ang isang pagbabago maaring pong maging uh, um ano na siya, hindi na siya maging, hindi na siya mag-respond well dun sa ini-implement ninyo na, na strategy or new tool. So again po, it should be properly um, implemented. Again, if you want to try this, at kung feeling nyo po, nag-iisa po kayo, um, ang pwede nyo gawin is, pwede nyo ayain yung mga yung feeling po ninyo na, na makakatulong po sa inyo, na mga co-teachers, who will be your year team or mini um, team that will help other teachers to migrate digitally. So, ayan. Thank you very much po sa mga nanonood. Maraming salamat. May mga questions pa po? Ayan. So, if a flash ko po ulit, if you want to apply for your school's Google for Education accounts, you can access or you can email education at qsr.com. Google for Education, it's free for, for schools. As long as you're a registered school in the Philippines and you have all the documents, we can help you. Educa uh, QSR can help you on processing them. Ayan.
Ayan. Um, thank you for the question. Um, po print TV. Ayan. Hello. In our school, we tried to do an open submission to cater to students with internet data problems. What's important is they will be able to submit on their convenience. So yet po, thank you very much for the hindi pala question. Thank you po for for the comment and for the tip for the audience ano. So again, yan po yung pwede nyo ring gawin. Um have an open submission. Yung iba naman po ginagawa is that they also have an avenue for sa kunari sa school, they may, they can also maybe use the library or computer room if they want to to open their Google Classroom. Pero again, um, for um, for strategies, no, pwede nyo ano, wag nyo isi-set ng kinabukasan yung deadline para to avoid some of the ano, the mga excuses or yung mga hindi pwedeng hindi nagagawa agad ng, ng student. Then, uh, another one, I guess that's the help we can extend to the students and families having internet problems. Tama po yan. Thank you very much. Um, Poprint TV. Mameline Montas, maraming salamat po. Thanks, Adrian. Ayan. Then, Ms. Rona, how can teachers increase students' learning time by using M-Learning? Um, increase students' learning time. Again, I think uh, it's not really about increasing the time. Kasi again, if we're delivering a, let's say, a one hour or two hour class in a day sa, sa, sa classroom natin, um, kapag kinonvert natin to online or into M-learning, it should be um, simplified already. But it's it's really not about the, the long, the, the, the time na mas mahaba, but it's more of how do we make our lesson plans na mas bite-sized pero mas impactful for the students. So it's either we give them options in um, show or in different performance tasks, pwede kayo magbigay ng options. You, you, set, you give them um, time allotment for them to be able to um, learn independently. Ayan. Again po, thank you very much for for watching tonight's session with the mobile classroom. Again, gusto po namin magsalamat for supporting this Philippines Edu Webinar Series. If you have any questions, any concerns, you can just um, leave your comment at the comment section or you can just uh, email us. All the details are in the slides. Again po, maraming salamat. Magandang gabi po.